This is the all-new ZenBook A14, and ASUS claims that you can get up to 32 hours of continuous video playback out of a single charge. If you want to stream from your favorite site, 28 hours, and when it comes to just everyday use on the web, messing around on social media, checking emails, around 19 and a half hours. And it's all coming in with a weight under one kilogram. I gotta say, one of the most impressive things here, other than the outstanding battery life with this laptop, is the weight. When I first picked it up, I actually thought the battery wasn't even in it. But it was, and to my surprise, it's actually a 70 watt hour battery. And this is all made possible because the laptop is constructed of what they're calling Ceram Aluminum. We've seen a lot of this in their newer Zen books. It's 30% lighter and three times stronger. And they also managed to cram a beautiful 14 inch OLED display in this thing with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. Most of the awesome battery life that we're getting out of this thing can be attributed to what CPU we have here. This is the Snapdragon X X126100, 8 cores, 8 threads, 30 megabytes of cache, and this will clock up to 2.97 gigahertz. The unit I have here has 32 gigs of onboard RAM, so this is non user upgradable. But the M.2 here is. It actually came with a 1TB 2280 PCIe 4.0 drive. It's got a 14-inch OLED display, resolution of 1920 by 1200 at 60 hertz. 600 nits of peak HDR brightness. It's 100% DCI-P3. We've also got that 70 watt hour battery, and this can be charged at 65 watts. It does come with the charger in the box. And this is running Windows 11. And when it comes to I.O., over on the right-hand side, we've got one full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. Over on the left-hand side, full-size HDMI 2.1, two USB 4 ports, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So far, it's been a really great experience using this laptop. It's got that chiclet-style backlit keyboard, single-zone white LED. We've also got their larger touch gesture trackpad here, so we can adjust the volume, we can change the brightness, and we can control our playhead while we're playing a video. I personally love the trackpads that they've been using for the past year or so. And overall, the initial user experience has been top notch with the A14 so far. So getting right into it here, when it comes to performance, this thing is really quick for everyday tasks. You want to browse the web, not a problem here. You want to do some video playback, check your emails, document editing, Photoshop has also been optimized for the Snapdragon X chip, and even though we've got an ARM CPU here, it works just like an x86 CPU would because it's using Microsoft's Prism translation layer. And I've tested a lot of these Snapdragon X chips on the market, from the X Elite, the X Plus, and now we've got the X here, which is on the lower tier. But for everyday normal use case scenarios that 99% of people do with their laptops, you're not going to be able to tell the difference in performance. I mean, browsing the web, video playback, checking your emails, document editing, stuff like that, you've got more than enough power with the X variant. And given that it's a lower power consumption chip, battery life is going to be king here. Again, they do claim up to 32 hours of continuous video playback, and that'll be local video. 28 hours of streaming from the web, so watching YouTube videos, Netflix, and 19 and a half hours of just browsing the web and messing around on social media. So if you're looking for a laptop with all day battery life, this could be a really good choice. Jumping in here a bit closer, there's a couple things that I wanted to show you. Uh, my Asus from our device settings, battery care mode. We can turn this on. It's only going to charge the battery up to 80%. Obviously, you're not going to get the same kind of runtime out of it, but this will extend the battery's lifespan. Uh, fan profile, so this is going to be really important if you want to get the max performance. Full speed mode, this is going to ramp the fans up, but it doesn't get that loud anyway. We've got a dual fan cooling system in this thing, and it gets up to around 25 decibels at full boat. When full speed mode is on, they're not going to run it 100% all the time, only when it really needs it. But this is going to give us the maximum performance. OLED care should already be on out of the box. Where is it? Should be down here. Just going to save that. Uh, yeah, Asus OLED Care. I would definitely leave this on. Pixel refresh, automatically hide Windows taskbar in desktop mode. Stuff like that just to alleviate any kind of burn in over a long period of time. OLED, flicker free dimming. This should already be active. There's a few other things in here, but mainly what I wanted to focus on was that full speed mode. Just to let you know that, yeah, this is going to give you the best performance out of the Snapdragon X chip. So obviously, a lot of these companies are pushing AI. And, uh, you know, we've got the NPU here, which should work out for uh, generative fill and things like that when it comes to AI. 
So I wanted to test this because usually when I test in Windows with generative fill, it's going to use the CPU or even the GPU. I'm hoping we can use the NPU here. This would actually be the first time we we're able to do it. I've got an image here. We're going to use Paint. There's a new feature in Paint. So I'll snap this over to the right hand side. I'm going to open up my Task Manager so we can get a look here. And I can do a freeform selection. Yeah, let's do freeform. Let's add something right here. You can see we've got this little option now generative fill. Let's add Godzilla. And as soon as I hit create, oh, we had a blip here. And it is, it's using the MPU. So this is awesome. This is the first time I'm able. Okay, it's not quite Godzilla, but we did add some type of lizard monster there. Let's try one more time. I'm actually kind of stoked about this because, again, it's usually just the CPU or GPU. This is way quicker than I thought it would be. Um, let's just add, we'll just add some type of mean looking monster or something. But yeah, I mean, this is working and it's utilizing the NPU. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this device. And the first one we have here is Geekbench 6, single core 2,116, multi 10,577. Definitely not looking bad for what we have here, but the next one is a GPU benchmark. 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with the 16,329, putting it far behind something like the AMD 8840U. And I kind of suspected this would happen. This isn't the highest end Snapdragon chip on the market, but I did want to get a little bit of gaming out of the way on him. And here we have Hades 2, easier to run game. It's running really good here, but uh, if you take a look up in the top left hand corner, I can't get the frame rate to display with the uh, Windows overlay. Now Afterburner doesn't work with this Snapdragon chip just yet, but I've got a feeling this is running at full speed. It's super smooth, and by the way, I am using an Xbox controller, and I figured, you know, with these lower-end indie games, we shouldn't have an issue on this thing, so let's take it up just a bit. Skyrim Special Edition, with this I had to take it down to 800p, we're at low settings, and Windows does have a super resolution option built in for these Snapdragon chips. It does seem to help out at higher resolutions, but when I went to 1200p with this, we were sitting at about 45 FPS. And as you can see, even at 800p low, we get those dips under 60. Here's Project Cars 2, and this performed better than I thought it would. We're at a low medium mix, 800p, so we're still not up in that resolution, but this is well over 60 FPS. I mean, it's really stable, very smooth here. But the Snapdragon X chip just isn't putting out the GPU performance that a lot of people would like. But either way you look at it, this is not marketed as a gaming machine by any means. With the power it's putting out, yeah, we've got some indie games, some older stuff is going to run. If you want to do Half-Life, Portal, Left 4 Dead 2, it's all going to run at full speed, 1200p. But it's not going to do the newer AAA games very well. The last thing I wanted to talk about here was battery life, and Asus does claim up to 32 hours of video playback, 19.5 hours replying to emails, checking social media, and 28 hours of movie streaming from your favorite site. While I didn't go through all of these tests, it is falling a bit short from what they stated over on their website. In silent mode, with screen brightness set to 50%, looks like we got 15 hours and 27 minutes of web browsing, so that's with Wi-Fi on and 23 hours and 17 minutes of video playback. It's definitely fallen short from their estimates over on their website, and I'm not sure what kind of settings they use to run their test, but either way you look at it, you're still gonna get all day battery life out of something like this, but going into it, you gotta know what to expect. It's not a high-end machine by any means, but it will get you by in your everyday laptop use case scenarios. Again, you wanna do a bunch of web browsing, no problem at all, document editing, you can get some photo editing on this, watch some movies, but you're not gonna be playing AAA games on the A14. Personally, love the overall design. It is super lightweight. The OLED looks great. It would be nice if it was a 120 hertz OLED, but I guess to keep the cost down, they went with a 60 hertz panel. But again, checking out the performance here, I mean, 120 really wouldn't make sense with that Snapdragon X chip anyway. I'm going to do some more battery life testing on this thing and I'll post it up in my community section. But if you're interested in learning a little more about the ZenBook A14, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see tested on this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, 
Thanks for watching.